Okay, leave a tail long enough to sew it up. Always. Mm -hmm. Always. For everything you do. Always leave Better a more tail. than, yeah. Always leave a decent tail to start and to finish. Why do you want to have that one to sew in and then break off another piece to sew up? Mm -hmm. In weights, you first stroke, keep your needles up. And I usually use 7.2, which is on. And one of my needles hasn't knitted there. Like this, and they would knit, knit properly. Knit one row back. Knit one row back. So no, you're knitting three rows here, and I've lost a stitch here as well. Okay, and then out again. Knit another row, and this is where you're doing your pick up. So you get your um, what tool? Yep. Thin tool. Mm -hmm. yep. Transfer. Transfer, Transfer tool. tool. <laughs> <laughs> and you're picking up the butt of the row before. See that? The heel. The heel, yeah. yeah. Just come in and have that. Yep. Yep. The row before. Okay. Number two row. Yep. And you're just picking that up and putting it on, so you're doubling up. See the, the oh, butt okay. or the heel down here? <coughs> and so it's just like a tiny hung hem. It is. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Tiny hung hem. And, yeah. and I, I missed this. This is a, a <coughs> no roll. Little. So she brought them out, the needles out, and then knitted back. Yeah. So now I'm going to put on a comb, and it goes on quite easily because it goes in mm. those spaces mm. there. See that? Mm. See how it just goes, seems to slip into those. Yeah? And it goes nicely. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So now we're going to do tuck, which is actually a slip on this machine. So it's every other needle on my, my spanner. It's a slip on that machine. Mm. Slip, and um, took me a long time to under, understand slip and tuck. Slip, the, the yarn goes across the needle, mm -hmm. and tuck, it hooks it around the end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. So this is going to be a tuck, I mean a slip. So I'm bringing my needles out. And what do you, do you do anything different on the carriage? I'm going into hold position. Okay. okay. So these these needles actually come out into hold. I don't know how it works on different machines, but it's going to bring out into the hold position. See that right out? So I'm doing three rows. One, two, three. Watch your end needles. And then I'm bringing it back into normal knit. And it's going to knit all of them. See that? All the needles have knit. And two rows. Once again, That's tuck. Good. Watch your end needles. One, two, three. Two rows of knit. And that didn't knit properly. And so what That's did you do one. here? What are you doing there? I'm That's bringing my selecting needle. these needles here. This is pre-punch card. This is what your punch yeah, card is so doing. Yeah. And which what punch card would you use to do this? Well, this is a, your, um, one by one. One by yeah. one. Yeah. Your number one card you choose to do that. And I'll do this one. Two, yeah, yeah, three. Yeah, because I'm missing out here. Slip or again. Uh, that one, I'll just leave it one row. And then, um, so it's three, three lots of tucks. Mm -hmm. Okay, one, two, three. To do... This little bit at the top here, one, two, three, yeah? Mm. Then I knit 16 rows. Sixteen rows? Yep. Ah I should have I should have back way back here deleted um Going back to um, 28 stitches, but I forgot to do that, and I'll do it, do that now. No, I don't think that's quite good. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, so you need 28 stitches, not 29. So after doing your tuck stitches, mm -hmm. you reduce. When I when when I do um, just by one needle, one, one needle. Yeah. When I do a um, de decrease, I don't. Actually, I'll show you. Okay. When I do a decrease, I don't ever touch the outside stitch. I'll leave that outside mm -hmm. stitch as it is because it gives you a nice edge to sew. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. See along here. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what I do is I take the next stitch move it across to the outside stitch and then bring them both in. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it still gives you that knobby knob. Um, there's, a, there's a loop and a knob. Yeah. A loop. A loop and a heel. <laughs> You're it's either a butt or a knob. <laughs> <laughs> You'll remember heel, butt, and knobs. Heel, butt, knobs. <laughs> Okay, so we're 28 stitches, which should have happened back down here. Then I have these um, double-ended needles. Oh, yes. And what I'm going to do is take seven off on this side, okay? I'm going to take them off. Are you just going forward, back, forward, back? Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm removing those seven needles, seven stitches. Come on, pen. Now it's not the time to run out of ink. So Here, here's lane. a pencil. Oops. Here's a pencil. Oh. I was trying to stop that. <laughs> oh, okay. So I'm knitting across to the other side, and then I'm doing these seven stitches, and I'm taking them off from these. These are great. Hmm. You can buy whole packets of these in. Tiny little sizes up to about, I'm not sure, about anywhere. Ten, ten. Temu has them. Oh. Okay. And they're about seven or eight dollars a pack. Okay. And they're really, really handy. Cool. I don't oh. buy off any of them. Aren't you? No. Well, that's cool. This one's been knitted. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm taking them off. And this is the basis for all the socks that I make. I think Nick has got a different pattern than one that I use. But it's the same pattern as this, but this is based on the big big sock pattern. So then... So this is for the heel? This is for the heel. Yeah. These wrap around afterwards, mm -hmm. and that's what your kitchener stitch. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So here, now I'm doing the front of the foot. So we've we've come down here, and that's I've just taken these stitches off. Yep. Okay. That's your seven, and that's your seven. Yeah. And then we're going to do this bit down here. And then go then sew as you go to finish it off. Well, I'll do the toe first. Oh right, yeah. Out of the way. So here I do another sixteen rows. So it's based on sixteen and sixteen. Um, three lots of tuck, sixteen rows, sixteen rows. I've already done one. And I went across there, so that's two. Take the toe. And this is where your short rows comes in, okay? Yes. Now you need your machine in hold. And we're going to short row down to six stitches. So six stitches here. Oh, there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is what we're doing, this shaping down here now. So what you do is you bring one needle in, into non-working position or hold position and you get one row. Next one over the on the carriage side into working position into non-working position, get one row. Where you're falling into trouble, where um, you um, are losing it, you, you need weights because when this happens it starts to belly, okay? Mm. And your stitches might jump off the yeah. needles. I use my fingers a lot, and I don't tend to use weights, but what you would do be, would be putting tension under this needle here and this needle here to stop it from jumping off, yeah? yeah. Okay, so next one into the hole, across. Next one into the hole, across. What it's doing is making shorter rows and shorter rows in the centre here. And that's automatic wrap. 
had to save right you having yes. to wrap, I should have showed it. you that, yes. What happens when you bring your needle out is that the yarn is on this side. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's going to wrap and it's not going to leave you whole. Mm -hmm. However, going back, and this is a wonderful Nick trick that Nick taught me. Not listening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> double double wrapping on your sock. Oh yeah. It, I was taught that you go opposite the carriage now and bring one back, and it gets confusing. You lose your place. Yeah. And Nick showed me at a workshop here that you put your yarn around there like that and pull it back on the right side. And what it's doing is you've got two wraps here mm. and it actually makes that lovely little... A beautiful little... Oh. That little pattern across yeah. there. See that? That little oh, yeah. texture. Yeah. And, and you don't lose where you are because you're always working on the carriage side. Oh. And that is a, one of the best tips I learned in that <laughs> workshop. Yeah. Okay. So you're going to go across so and then you're going to wrap... Now I'm putting them back into work individually. So across... Take it here, wrap it around there, pull it back. It's going to knit now. And once again, see how that's bellowing? Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh. yeah. So normally, what you win this? Mm -hmm. you, I'm recording it. You see how the weight puts the tension on those oh, yeah. outside stitches? So here, we're wrapping. Here, we're wrapping. Yeah. So you went down to where there were six, and now you're. And now I'm going But you're only doing this wrapping for the last <laughs> when you're putting them back. Yes. This yeah. extra wrap. Okay, yes. so, so you okay. don't need to on the other side. So yeah. we're back to square one again. The last one didn't knit. Neither did it. Now is where you do sew as you go. Mm. And what you're doing is picking up stitches from the edges here and it's actually giving you this seam down the side here. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there's no stitching, but it's, it's joining as it goes. You think it's never going to look any good because it just looks... But it's okay. Now I start off... So you've got 16 rows here, so theoretically you should be picking up 16 stitches. Mm -hmm. But I always pick up the first two to begin with. And the first two is that one right there. That one. And I just put that on the needle. See that one? And this one, one here. One that's a long one, isn't it? I yeah. Pull it up. But it's yeah. this one down here. So it's above that first bump. So that one. And that one. So it's just, it, there's that and then the knot, and then the, that and then the okay. knot. Yeah. So one row. Right. And then okay. you're always doing it on the carriage side again. So here's your knot and here's your loop. And you're picking up that loop and you're putting that on there. Next one down. We've oh, so you that just do one for mm. one row. One. Yeah. And this side, because that's already part of that first one. I mean, the, yeah. Put that on. I That's that how I joined. So the longer actually, one is from the previous jumpers. one. Yeah. Was. You, yes. You, yeah, you, you get familiar with what yeah. you're yeah. So theoretically, you should end up with 16 down here. Yeah. I do leave the weight on because you need a bit of weight on this. It looks as though it's going to be terrible, but you need a bit of stretch in that part. You don't want it to be too tight. Working on the carriage side all the time. Who's that? Not the Sally. Don't know. Oh, Sally. So she's going down to where she had taken those seven off. The last one on this side. And the last one on this side. Yeah. Now, see, we're back to the seven. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's where it started? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we're going to do the heel. And the heel is done exactly the same as the toe. Okay. 
needle, uh, carriage in hole, bring out your first needle and down to your six again. Can't be done. I'm a lazy knitter. So use weight for the center. And use your thumb. Down to your six in the middle again, and then we're going to double the wrap back. Which keeps all on the carriage side and you don't get confused. You pull it back to the back. So it goes back into working. Back to B position, yeah. Oh, yeah, back into a, um, a position where it will So C, yeah. yeah. What is that? C, yeah. About there. Some machines are a little bit more touchy than others. This is a very forgiving little machine. As long as you just get back so that the latch is just in line with the needle bit. Ah, there you go. So, now, I'm going to get rid of that. It's basically finished. So here, we're going to rehang these needles, I mean these stitches. Um, I'm just going to take them off one by one. You have to take them off a particular way, like through the back or the front? Or... It, it's only, there's just the stitch there. So and you... which stitch did you start to rehang it on? The well, middle. The seventh. Number seven. So you've got seven on either side. You've taken oh, seven off okay. and you've put seven on. So they've got to go back where they... Seven. Oh, got seven you. Over okay. Seven. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know how people like to do their kitchener stitch, but I like to do it on the machine itself. And so is there a total of 14 there? Yes. <coughs> so we started with 29, we went down to 28, so it's half of your 28, yeah? Mm -hmm. You've got to have equal stitches on either side. But if you're doing an adult sock, it's the same concept. Yeah, just, just more stitches. Standing with mm. more? Yeah. Okay. And longer, more than 16 rows, yeah. The process for the adult sock is exactly the same. Hello, Sally. Hey, gorgeous. You made it. Yeah, but I've got lost and you're not answering your phone, so... Oh. Hello, how are you? Hello, Sally. How are you? Oh, do you? Yeah. I was feeling dull and grey, so I just thought, whack a bit of something. I was the You could do with some blue or something. Oh, okay. No, it's all right. I just... No, it's okay. And they do it Anyone know what this is? A jar. Thank you. <laughs> it's a Coke bottle. Oh, it is, before they blow them up. Yeah. Huh. So, how did you get it? I don't know. That needle out, that hole out. Every hand you can get that. Yeah. Mm. So what I do when I've got the thread here, yeah. see how you've got that you right awkward space? Yeah. I just fill it in. I just get the the yarn and darn it up. Darn it up. Yeah. It's drawing it up basically. So you do get that with the hand knits, do you? Yeah. Nick doesn't get it with a sock oh, machine. No. Okay. So basically, I'm just sort of pulling it up. So for Kitchener Stitch, I don't know whether you know it, but it's, well, when you do it enough, you will. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, I do it as smiles and frowns. So at the top, you're doing the first stitch and you're going through this side here. It's a half stitch. And then you're coming down through this half stitch here on this side. Is that the next needle? Oh no, no. that's on the same. No, okay. And then two on the one there. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just a half stitch either side. And then it's done in what I call smiles and frowns. At the top is a smile. Get your fingers in there. Oh sorry love. And go through here, this stitch here. Turn your needle round, go through this stitch here. And it's a smile. 
then come down to the bottom and it's going to be a frown so you're going to go the other way Okay. Yeah. Keep you keep your thread on the opposite side, opposite in the next well, in the next space to where you're working. So we're going in here now. So once again, it's a smile at the top. You're coming down through the stitch and up through the stitch. It's a bit awkward, but when you get your fingers in there and give the stitch a pull around. And then at the bottom, a frown at the bottom. So frown going up and then down. At the top, down and up. And at the bottom, up and down. Anyone want to have a go?